Hi, I'm Anthony Annaletto from Sunny's The Car Wash Factory. We're here in Wake Forest, North Carolina at American Pride Car Wash on a light rainy day. It gives us the opportunity to spend some time with Wayne Finley from Pantron Automation and talk about one of the most important little electronic components in the car wash that help us save a lot of money. Wayne, what is that? That's the photoelectric system. It's the eyes that drive and monitor your car wash. Let's take a walk inside and see how they work. The Pantron photoelectric system is an important component in the car wash because it communicates vital information to the wash computer. Photo eyes are used to detect vehicles in order to start and stop equipment. They can also be used to measure the length of vehicles or profile the outline of the vehicle. This is what the photo eye looks like without the protective cover that is provided by Sunnies. The photoelectric system provides the wash computer with an accurate measurement of the vehicle which results in more efficient use of water and chemicals. Photo eyes work well as the sensing device in a wheel wash system where it is important not to waste chemicals or misfire and apply them to the wrong areas of the vehicle. Photo eyes are a good replacement for limit switches and treadle plates because they do not require contact with the vehicle or perfect vehicle alignment and they use minimal moving parts. Wayne, let's take a minute and tell people a little bit about how the photo eye system works and how it helps save money and actually improve the performance of the car wash. Okay. Uh, when the car enters the uh, car wash, the photo eyes measure the length of the vehicle from bumper to bumper so you know the difference in the size of the vehicle, whether you're measuring a Volkswagen or an Expedition. Um, that lets you know by counting pulses or counting seconds, counting inches, um, how long the vehicle is. That way you're not putting chemical or soap on the floor. Um, and when the when the tire hits the tire switch, that lets the uh, computer know exactly where the tire is, so it's only applying chemical and, uh, to the tire itself. And it's a, it's a far cry from where we were years ago with wands trying to measure a vehicle, and the wand would come on, and because the wand was long, it would make everything stay on longer than the back of the vehicle. And then also, there's still quite a few people using a loop detector here that'll sense the, the mass of the metal of the vehicle, and that is, uh, it's okay a little bit in the friction wash, and they do it mostly because if they're prepping the vehicle and they don't, and they walk in front of the eye, they don't want the, to send that car or clear the queue. And today's computer systems actually have a delay. So we can put a delay on the photo eye so that the car wash won't turn on and won't count that car if in fact you walk through it in a couple of quick seconds. So we've come a long way from actually being very precise, measuring the vehicle, controlling the chemistry, getting a cleaner car, and yet not wasting any product. And this also translates to the end of the tunnel. I mean, we're turning things on now with the photo eye. Gators on our blowers, we're saving energy down there. Uh, we're attracting the top brush. We can see here we've got a set of photo eyes that can detect a pickup truck. And we can actually raise and lower the, the top brush. We can actually change things going on down the back of the tunnel. But overall, I mean, the photo eyes are very valuable in the car wash operation. Let's take, let's take a look at some of the components that make up the photo eye system. The transmitter and receiver eyes are mounted in a through beam configuration and project an invisible beam across the wash tunnel at a point in the wash where the vehicle should be detected. When a vehicle interrupts this beam, the resulting output from the photoelectric system is sent to the wash computer. Using a brief time delay in conjunction with the photoelectric system will help prevent workers from accidentally causing the photoelectric system to misread. At the entrance of the wash, the eyes are normally mounted on stands and arranged so that the infrared beam is projected at an angle. One eye is mounted about 6 inches from the ground and the other is mounted at approximately 30 inches high. It is important to angle the eyes so they face each other in order to maintain a strong signal and always mount the receiver eye on the high side facing downward. This reduces interference from the sun. So here we are back at the front of the car wash. Wayne, let's talk a little bit about mounting the photo eyes and uh, any special tricks or tips you can give us. Okay, we'll do that. Uh, the first thing you'll notice with the, mount, the photo eyes here, um, you've got one mounted low, the other mounted high. The reason for that, you want to be able to detect the car and not shoot underneath the car, and also detect um, a truck without shooting through the truck bed. Um, it's always important to mount the receiver so the receiver is facing downward. Uh, that way it's not looking into the sun. So how can, is, it an, is there an easy way to identify the transmitter and the receiver? Yeah, there sure is. Uh, they have a color-coded strain relief on the back that's made out of plastic. On the back of the receiver, that strain relief is black. And on the transmitter, it's red. So it's easy to tell at arm's length you know, which one's which. And then once we mount them, we've got a, we, we provide a swivel bracket for them so they can actually adjust 
uh, the height angle. How critical does it, did, did we pull a string in it? I mean, the beam of the light is how big? If you can pull a string and get the eye so they're parallel with that string, then that's close enough. You're gonna get a good signal from it. And then there is a way to test the strength of the signal from the amplifier, which will show us. That's right. All right. Well, let's take a look at the uh, amplifier and see how we can do the diagnostic and look at those settings. The Pantron photo eyes connect to an 11 pin socket base where power is applied and output wires are connected back to the wash computer. The amplifier is the controller for the photoelectric system and plugs into the socket. The amplifier and socket should always be kept dry in a sealed enclosure or control cabinet. Take note of the dip switch settings prior to connecting the amplifier to the socket. A diagram is printed on the side of the amplifier to assist in choosing the correct setting. Pantron recommends using the amplifier in the high one setting and in dark mode for most wash applications. The setting for this is one up, two down, three up, and four down. The amplifier automatically controls the intensity of light emitted by the transmitter so that the photoelectric system is always operating at the optimum level. When the wash is idle, the photoelectric system operates on a lower setting to help prolong the useful life of the photo eyes. When water is spraying and soap covers the front of the eyes, the amplifier increases the system power to see through everything in its path except the vehicle. Wayne, tell us a little bit about the amplifier, um, how we read the voltage on it, how we do settings, what the standard setting should be, and how, to do, how some of the diagnostics work. Okay. Um, this is a single channel automatic amplifier. Um, also with this wash, they have a two channel uh, that controls the uh, top brush auto retract. Um, this is typically used for measuring the car. Uh, it controls one set of photo eyes. It adjusts its power setting automatically. If you don't need the extra power, it's gonna run in a lower setting, which helps to uh, prolong the life of the components. Um, when you need to penetrate through the, the fog and the steam and the soap and every condition you've got in the wash, that's when this is gonna turn up and it's gonna give you more power. Um, to tell which uh, supply voltage you have, if you look on the back, there's a solar sticker. It has the part number. The trailing end of the part number is going to be the supply voltage. This one is a 24 volt AC amplifier. Um, on the back, you'll also notice dip switches. You have four dip switches. For the single channel automatic, we recommend uh, dip switch one up, dip switch two down, three up, and four down. And what that's going to do, the first two are going to put it in the, uh, the high one power setting, which like I said, it's an automatic amplifier. It's gonna adjust the power setting from the low end all the way up to 75% of its maximum when you have it set on high one. That's gonna give you a little more power when you need it. Uh, the third switch is for your light dark, light dark operation, which is basically like normally open, normally closed. Uh, in this case, we're gonna leave it in the up position that's in dark mode. So you're gonna get an output whenever the car breaks the beam. The fourth setting is a, tra is a uh, transmit frequency setting. Depending on how that's set, you could have multiple amplifiers, multiple photo eyes in the same area, and they're not going to talk to each other. So if you need to have more than one set, put these on opposite settings with two different amplifiers, you can run them like they don't even exist with each other. That's great. What about the diagnostics on the front? Once we put the eyes in and we line them up with the string we talked about, how do, there's a way to tell us how good a signal we have? That's right. This has a microprocessor built in. It has diagnostics so that once you get the eyes aligned as well as you can with the string, when you push the button on the front, it's going to give you a, a blinking LED that's going to tell you on a scale from 1 to 10 how strong the signal is. The lower the number, the weaker the signal. The, strong, the higher the number, all the way up to 10, the stronger the signal, the better you've got the eyes aligned. Um, if there was a problem, let's say something happens when one of the eyes is damaged, uh, one of the cables is severed, uh, doing the same diagnostic test will change. It'll give you, it'll tell you which one of the eyes is causing the problem, whether it's the transmitter or the receiver, and what the problem is, whether it's a short or an open. Um, if for some reason the eyes are both connected, they're both okay, but they don't see each other, there's also a, a readout for that. It'll give you a no signal error. So that way you know the photo eyes are intact. Just, there's no visual alignment between them. And then on the, the, the scale from one to 10 for the strength, where do, we, where do we stop moving them around? What is a good setting? If you can get about a six or seven, that should be okay. Um, any, any better than that, you're doing great, but I would be happy with a six or seven. And the thing I like most about these here, there's a tech support phone number on the side of that amplifier. Who answers the phone when that happens? That's right. That's going to probably be me. Good. Yeah. Um, and I love this amplifier because it's easy to troubleshoot. I tell you, press a button, you tell me what it says, we fix the problem. You're back up and running. That's perfect. I think the customers are really going to like that. It's going to keep them up and running for quite a long time. Again, thanks a lot. Let's go outside and maybe we can push buttons on the active sensor and see how our settings are here. Just show them how that works. 
So Anthony, what we have here is the uh, photoelectric system actually hooked up. I wanted you to be able to see it functioning. Um, you see the enclosure box here. This needs to be mounted inside the wash uh, on a good sturdy solid wall or in the equipment room, just not on the equipment itself. If you put on the equipment, at some point it's going to have to be clean and uh, you don't want this to be interfering. Um, I'm going to take this cover off. Usually you have four screws that have to be loosened. When you pull this off, you can actually access the amplifier. Let's move that for a second. Um, you'll see the lights here on the amplifier. This shows you, number one, that the eyes see each other when you see this green light on. Um, when you push this button, as long as nothing's blocking the eyes, it's going to tell me how well they're aligned. You can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They've got a perfect signal. Can't ask for better than that. Um, amplifier also includes, includes built-in diagnostics if there's a problem. It can tell you that the eyes either are not aligned or if they're dirty. Um, if something happens and one of the eyes is damaged, it can tell you whether it's the transmitter or the receiver and what the problem is, whether it's a short or an open. Okay. I'll get you to go ahead and block the eyes for me. You'll see it goes to an output. If you walked up right now and the eyes were not functioning properly, the wash equipment's not working, and you saw that it was sitting on an output, it's going to tell you one of several things. Either the eyes don't see each other, or there's something blocking them, or they're totally out of alignment. What I can do is push the same button I pushed before, and this time, instead of giving me a signal strength count, you'll notice the no signal light and the alarm light are blinking together. It lets me know that the transmitter and the receiver are both connected. It knows they're both good, but they just don't see each other. So that narrows down the troubleshooting. You can go straight to the problem and find either they're dirty or they're out of alignment. In addition to automatically adjusting the power of the photo eyes, the amplifier includes processor-controlled diagnostics that assist with alignment and troubleshooting. When the photo eyes see each other, the diagnostic reading will report the signal strength on a 1 to 10 scale. If there is a problem with either photo eye, the diagnostic test will report whether the transmitter eye or the receiver eye is causing the problem, and if the problem is a short, an open, or that the eyes are simply too far out of alignment to see each other. This streamlines the troubleshooting process and allows the wash to be up and running again in less time. Hey Wayne, every, in, in every car wash there's always a problem where things are going to break down. It's not a matter if, it's always when. So when things break down, it's real important that we have some redundancy built in and we have a way to get back into business in, in, a, in a hurry. I know that there's a, we're about to launch a new line of the photo eyes and the cords and the transmitter receivers. Can you tell us a little bit about them and how it's going to help our customer get to stay sharp and stay in, ready to work? Yeah, I sure can. Uh, traditionally, the eyes that you've been using are the hardwired type. So the cable's connected to the eye physically. You can't remove it. Um, one thing Sunny's is going to be offering soon is the Quick Connect version. Um, as you can see, the sensor just plugged into the cable. If something happens to the sensor head, rather than pulling the cable out and rewiring the whole thing, all you have to do is just take out the sensor, put a new one in, screw it down tight, a watertight IP67 seal, and you're good to go. Let me ask you a question. Same cable works for both the transmitter and the receiver? Yes, it does. It does. So it's just a four-wire cable, so that's the same. So we have one part that handles both eyes in case we need to run a cable, someone gets caught. And then the transmitter receiver, we can, we'll can be able to sell those separately so they can keep one of those on the shelf of each type and be able to then um, change that in an instant, right, right, when things go wrong. That's going to be pretty cool. And we know what you've been testing them, and I've been screaming about if I put them in and the water gets in them and they fail because someone hit them with a gun, we're not going to have that problem. You guys have gone through the testing and we're pretty ready to go. Yeah, these have been used in really heavy environments with a lot of spray, and we know they're going to work. Yeah. That's fantastic. That's going to really help the customer be able to do their own diagnostics, and you, you'll, again, you'll, you'll show us that. The system will tell us if it's a transmitter failure or a, or a receiver failure, and then based on the color code and based on what's on that, that eye, we can actually um, make the change. This one now doesn't have the color-coded end, does it, or does it still? No, it does not. That's one thing we lose going to the quick disconnect is the, um, the color-coded strain relief. So how do I identify transmitter receiver here? The part number is listed on a little wraparound band. Um, it shows IR for receiver and IT for transmitter. And that, that's pretty reliable, that'll, that'll be there when we go to take that off? Yeah, it should be. Okay, great. Sunny's now offers photo eyes in a quick connect style that allows the eyes to be easily changed while maintaining an IP67 rated seal. This eliminates the need to pull cables through the floors and walls just to replace the sensor head. If the photo eye positions ever need to be changed to move the receiver out of the sun, this can be accomplished by unscrewing and swapping the sensors, adjusting them to the correct height, and swapping the photo eye wires on the socket. Each component of the system, the amplifier, socket, transmitter eye, receiver eye, and the cables may be purchased separately. 
Quick Connect cables are available in several lengths. Wayne, these new features that are coming out for the photo eye system with the removable um, transmitter receiver, being able to have one cable to do it all, plus um, your help teaching them how to really dial in the photo eyes to make them work at their optimal performance is going to be a real money saver and a real uh, uh, cost saver as far as maintenance and maintaining your own system goes. That's right. By being able to replace the photo eye and not the entire cable, it's going to save in downtime, which cars operators know that equals money. Um, by tuning these in, getting them set properly, um, you're going to get a better measurement on the car. You'll be able to save chemicals, uh, make it more efficient, and better wash. All right. Hey, Wayne, thanks for coming out here to Wake Forest, uh, North Carolina, at American Pride Car Wash. I think the tips that you gave our customers today is going to really help them manage their own sites, perform better, and maximize their performance at their wash. Um, and for you outside, watch this video, learn from Wayne, um, and really take, take charge of your own car wash and, and help yourself do a better job and stay running longer and have more uptime. As always, good luck and good washing.